Hello, I'm Judith Beville, Greenberg Town Clerk and co-coordinator of the 2018 Greenberg Town Hall Summer Internship Program. Paul Feiner, Town Supervisor, and Tim Lewis, Town Attorney, and I have been coordinating and presenting this program to the Town of Greenberg for the past 10 years. Today, we are here to kick off a very important program. Rock Your World is an international project, and it is a project designed to engage students of all ages in learning about the Human Rights Articles. With us today to help kick off this program is Patrick Sherrata. Patrick is Program Director of the World Development Foundation and will be leading our kickoff here in the town of Greenberg. Patrick? Ms. Bill, thank you so much for the introduction and the opportunity to serve here. It's been a pleasure meeting you and knowing you, and I can't wait to work with your interns and then, by extension, all of the youth throughout Westchester. Thank you so much. You should really be applauded for the fine work that you do. Um, once again, my name is Patrick Sharada, and I'm here representing uh, UNA Westchester, where I am a member of the Board of Directors. I am also a uh, badge holder at the United Nations and work there regularly on projects that involve civil society and their relationship to the policy makers at the United Nations. I'm really excited to be here today because the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is commemorating its 70th anniversary this year. And we at the United Nations have been active in celebrating that commemoration. We will be having a major conference on August 22nd and 23rd called the United Nations Department of Public Information uh, Conference. And uh, you're all welcome to register. It is free. We anticipate having about 1,500 delegates interested in civil society activities from around the world and I am the co-chair of its logistics committee uh, and very proud to be a part of something that will celebrate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, before I begin, I also wanted to say that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has some basis in Westchester County, which is why the board of directors of UNA Westchester, the United Nations Association, or the kind of the friends of the UN in Westchester, got involved. A woman named Molly Bruce uh, was the secretary to Eleanor Roosevelt, and both of them did a lot of the work of actually scribing down these 32 points that are in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Westchester. And um, Molly, Margaret Bruce, was a um, longtime member of the United Nations Association Westchester Board of Directors. She and I served on the board uh, together, and I was proud to help honor her um, at uh, UNESCO, uh, the Paris-based uh, agency that works with the UN on the 60th anniversary in 2008. She is no longer with us, but her spirit remains alive through the Universal Declaration. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it sounds very much like everything that comes out of the UN, sort of opaque, dark, difficult to understand, a lot of words, jargon. But in truth, human rights are the, foundation, uh, the foundational elements that every single human being is deserving throughout the world. Sadly, however, every human being does not enjoy the human rights that we aspire to and wrote down 70 years ago uh, throughout the world. So Rock Your World is a project of a California-based um, nonprofit called Creative Visions. But what Creative Visions has done in Rock Your World uh, and through other programs has been to use the power of storytelling and the media to help youth understand and become advocates for human rights issues. And therefore, we've been happy to use the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as our foundation. It was designed by educators 
and this program, Rock Your World, engages middle and high school students in real world issues and guides them to explore and communicate through creative advocacy campaigns using a variety of media to express themselves, uh, film, music, art, theater, and more. So Rock Your World, by the way, has engaged nearly 30,000 teachers from in over 25,000 schools in 72 countries across the globe. So we're very, very happy to now have Greenberg to be part of that consortium uh, working together around the world. What's most compelling is that the program has inspired nearly 700,000 students across the world to take action towards positive social change. Rock Your World inspires students it encourages them to ask bold questions about the challenges they see in their neighborhoods, their communities, and the world around them. Asking questions is an important first step, but where do we go from there? Rock Your World engages students in dialogue and action so that we can overcome some of the challenges that we see. How to find those solutions to intractable challenges are sometimes best left to our youth who have tremendous creative ideas that many of us have either not thought about or discarded without much thought in the past. Rock Your World stands on the pillars of discovery first, then inquiry, then action. So what we're trying to do with Rock Your World is create a force multiplier. We want to make a positive change that we know can happen and inject it with some magical energy to allow it to reach a truly global scale. Now, as I said, we've reached over 700,000 students. By the end of this year, we hope to engage over a million students. We want to engage the students of Westchester County throughout the county in every grade from 5 through 12. We feel that this magical energy that we're looking for is the power of humanity and creativity. The energy and the creativity within each human being. The only power that's capable of broad scale transformation. So where do we go from here? We propose a challenge. And the challenge is to every single young person in our community, for starters, and the adults who love and support them. We want you all, especially the youth, to read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and I believe we'll be bringing it up on the screen for you to find a link to it, but you can easily find a link to not only the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but a summary of it, because it's some 30-odd points, and there's also a summary online that you can find as well, so you can read it, you can understand it, you can digest its content, you can internalize it, and think deeply about it, and then and act upon it. We are partnering with the town of Greenberg and other towns throughout Westchester to, and with Rock Your World to launch UDHR Now, Universal Declaration of Human Rights Now. It's a challenge for all middle and high school students to create campaigns in response to the human rights issues of their choice. Well, start by visiting the UN website then look at the Rock Your World website. Use any other information you like to develop a creative way that we, as members of humanity, all of us, can help protect human rights uh, for all of us, now and for generations to come. So next maybe we'll talk a little bit about the timeline for Rock Your World in Westchester County. And um, I would like to take some questions, or maybe there are some things you might like to ask, and we can proceed from there. Patrick, before um, we take questions from our college students, who we're very fortunate to have with us, uh, all of the, the, the students who you see joining us today are all graduates of high schools here in the town of Greenberg, and they are, are now matriculating college students, and they will be helping us through the Greenberg Internship Program to roll out this partnership with Patrick. I just have one question. You uh, asked uh, the audience to go to the United Nations, Google United Nations online. Will they find the Articles of Human Rights 
if they go to the UN site? Even if you, before going to the UN website, there's a search bar at UN website, but even in a simple Google search, just type in Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and you will not only get to it on the uh, UN website, but you'll get to it on other websites as well. And there was one website that uh, Marsha Brewster, who has been the president of UNA Westchester for many years, has found which actually provides a summary for it, or a kind of explanation for it, as well as the actual articles. And we think that, you know, this generation of youth is, to pardon the expression, woke. And I think they will really understand this and embrace parts of it that are very meaningful for themselves. Okay. Hello, I am Michael Vera. I am a rising freshman in SUNY Albany, and I am here to help Patrick with this amazing project. First, I have a question to ask him. Patrick, what is the Rocky World's look into bringing the realm of education? What is the Rocky World's look to bring into the realm of education? Well, the Rocky World, if you go onto their website, you'll see that they've actually created core curriculum, which has been approved. It was approved by Arne Duncan, the previous uh, Secretary of Education under the last administration. And there are thousands of schools in California, in inner city um, uh, Chicago, even here in New York, up in Somers, that have embraced this as a curriculum. So it rolls out as a curriculum that any superintendent, principal, or faculty member could bring into their school system. What we're hoping to do with Rock Your World is almost maybe bubble up from the bottom up. We're asking young people in grades 5 through 12 to watch this video, then go online, read it themselves, and either have a solo response to it, or better yet, what we really hope, is that they will put together a group of four or five people that say, we want to deal with water rights, we want to deal with uh, women's gender equality, or some issue that is in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and then have some response to it. We're going to create a little playlet. I know you're involved in theater. Uh, or we're going to create a video, or we're going to put up poster boards. Uh, generally, they find an NGO or a nonprofit, some member of civil society that's dealing with this issue. So they can go back and say, there was a young woman named Hashita, who uh, was Indian background, American, but uh, she had as her idea the promotion of uh, finding ways to support uh, feminine hygiene uh, uh, products for women who are either refugees or in prison or are poor. And there's an organization, My Sister's Place, that was very helpful in her research. Uh, and so they began to, she began to work with them as a cooperating nonprofit. And many of the students who have worked already on this program in small groups have done the same thing. So it rolls out as the possibility of a curriculum-based study program. Uh, but what it really is is an action-oriented program that young people can take into their own hands, read, learn about, and react to. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ariel. I'm a rising junior at Towson University, and I'm also here to assist Patrick with his project. Now, Patrick, my question for you is, can you tell us a little bit about the legacy of Don Eldon, and what was the inspiration for this curriculum? Creative Visions was begun in California by a woman named Kathy Eldon, the mom of Don Eldon. Don Eldon was an award-winning uh, journalist who found himself in Iran in a very difficult time in the 90s and was actually stoned to death by a crowd of people in Iran. And his mother, Kathy, made it her life's work to create creative visions as a way to assist other young people who were dealing with human rights issues throughout the world and to chronicle them. If you go on to the Creative Visions website, I know we're giving you a lot of terms and places to look, but mostly they're fun. Rock Your World's parent company is the Creative Visions, and Creative Visions has many documentaries which chronicle this kind of work done by young people across the country and around the world in Don's name as part of his legacy. Thank you for asking. Hello, my name is Brianna Warner. 
I'm a rising graduate student at Hofstra University, and I'm also on the Patrick Cap this summer. Um, one of the questions I had was, um, do you think having Rock Your World in the New York State public schools will allow students to get out of their comfort zones? Um, what objectives are the Rock Your World um, curriculum looking to do? That's a great question. I, it might get them into a comfort zone, but it might also bring them out of one. Most of us don't really know about the uh, Declaration of Human Rights. Most of us don't realize that 70 years ago, the then First Lady of the United States under President Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, who was very active in the formation and the beginnings of the United Nations, felt that we needed to articulate what human rights were in a time when we were at war, uh, the Second World War was coming to an end, and it was also a time where there was a rising populist movement on the right that created fascism, Nazism, and uh, some of the problems that unfortunately we see echoed today, even in our own country, as surprising as it may seem, and alerting young people to what their basic human rights are is something that I think will wake people up, especially young people, to see what it is we have all agreed upon throughout the world that we deserve as human rights. And many of those are in question right now. And I think that by doing this, we will strengthen young people's understanding of their place in their community, in their society, and in the world. And so I'm, I'm very encouraged about not only asking young people to find out what the Human Declaration of, the Declaration of Human Rights is, but react to it, and react to it creatively. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So Patrick, what should our superintendents here in the town of Greenberg and throughout Westchester, our superintendents, our principals, and our teachers um, expect from us as we move forward in rolling out this program? Thank you for asking. I would say that, number one, they should uh, contact us. If you will contact us at UNA USA, and we'll probably put this up on the screen, but you can write to me at challenge, C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G, challenge.unawestchester at gmail.com. Challenge.unawestchester at gmail.com. And we will then register you as part of this initiative and give you more information. We are putting together a press kit that will actually be ready in a week. So maybe by the time you see this, we'll be ready to send you a press kit or just bring you to a link online where you can download it and share it yourselves. All of those registered would be allowed to enter this challenge. So now faculty will be involved, the principals and faculty will decide how they want this to roll out in their school. Making it part of core curriculum, of course, would be fantastic, but making it just a project of a model UN club or an international club that may exist in your high school or middle school will be a great way to make this a project. Uh, we intend to do a hard launch, a media launch for this after the summer of sending out press releases and inviting you, superintendents, principals, teachers, and students to watch this video. We made this movie about my brother, Dan. You tell me, young man, what you plan to do when you finish taking photos? I'm not planning to finish that. Regular Somali folk are getting shot by soldiers. That should be news. What are you, like a disaster tourist? We're in a war zone. Connection is the solution. I've spent so much of my life being asked about my brother. <laughs> Turn that bloody thing off. Who was he? What made him so incredible? Why has he become such this mythical figure? <laughs> They're all great questions, because he really was amazing. Dan Eldon is a legend. I think Dan Eldon was... Photographer, poet, war journalist. We're now on the outskirts of southern Mogadishu. This incredible 22-year-old man. I traveled so widely. Been to, I think, 46 countries by the time he was 22. He cared about people. He raised money by throwing a dance for a girl's heart surgery. He was a pioneer. The true explorer. Most of all, he was a humanitarian. And he never asked for permission to do it. He just went out and did it. Because he believes in something. And he followed it got to see, you know, 
the man behind the myth. I mean, he's become this mythical character and he's just, he's just a regular guy who really had fun doing good in the world and that's all it is. Dan, one of his phrases was look for solutions, not problems. And he was constantly trying to figure out how he could help people. He magnified the good and the bold and the powerful in all of us. Um, and then he also took chances on people that most people would maybe overlook or not take a chance on. We had this little girl who was in our class at school and she needed a heart transplant. And so Dan threw this huge raucous party in our backyard and he raised the funds for this young girl to have a heart operation and he saved this little girl's life and that was in high school. I think it was really empowering because he realized from a young age, wow, this, I mean, I can do this. The next level, he went into this country of Malawi where we went on this incredible journey to help the refugees there. We wanted to bring them something like a water pump or blankets. Um, I just we'd never seen anything like this before. And again, every time we went somewhere, we realized actually we're not really helping these people. These people are helping us way more than we're helping because we were learning so much from these people and their resilience. He went on for his, you know, final mission was with Somalia, helping to create awareness about this country in need. And so it was hard for me at the age of 19 to understand how this beautiful spirit who was all about good and all about seeing the best with people and all about helping people could be crushed by this, this force of, of anger and ignorance, basically. Tragedy struck today in Somalia after a military operation was launched. I had an internship in, in Mexico and I was with a friend of mine and, you know, it was a really exciting time in my life. It was just, I had just had my birthday and I was just feeling like this whole, my whole life was ahead of me and I was so excited to live this life. And the phone rang. It was my mom and she said, this is the phone call I never wanted to make, but Dan has been killed. My brother was covering the war in Somalia in 1993, and through a misunderstanding, he was stoned and beaten to death by a mob at the age of 22. There's no way that he could be killed. I just thought there was some kind of mistake, or maybe they killed the, somebody else. I mean, it just it was so confusing to me. And then as I kept talking to her, I realized, no, this is real, like that he really is, is, has been killed. And it just was so hard to comprehend. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. That's brilliant. <laughs> Dan was an artist, he was an adventurer, he was an activist. He just ran at life. He was fearless, he was bold, he was a leader, he was hilarious. And by the age of 21, he happened to be the youngest photojournalist to work with Reuters. He was my big brother. I think I went through a real period of darkness and pain. You know, it's not something you can avoid when you go through such a shocking, violent experience like that. What I always come back to is that in every dark situation, there's an equal amount of light. And wherever you see tragedy and horror, they are always the helpers who are there, um, just maybe out of frame, but you know they're there. And I want to be a helper. <laughs> the road is very safe. Yes. Yes. Dan left behind 20 journals, and he was always carrying one with him. I think that the journals are an amazing reflection of this short but incredible ride that Dan had because he would just pour all his thoughts and feelings and experiences into these journals and, and use them as a way of understanding what his experience had been. We took the pages from his journals and created a book called The Journey is the Destination. We just kept getting these letters and phone calls from people all around the world saying how impacted they were by his story and so we knew we had to do something. We started this organization dedicated to helping people find solutions to some of their local challenges. And then we made this film. We have no idea. I mean, nobody does. The place, it's, it's in chaos. There's people starving to death and nobody knows. I think ultimately our hope was to show 
young people what's possible. I hope that in seeing how Dan lived his life, that kids can realize that they can craft their own life, that nobody else is creating their map, that they have to create their own journey and they have to dust off their own map and figure out where they're going and not, you know, listen to everybody else's idea of what's right for them because you know in your, you know inside what your path is. The main thing is to not be paralyzed just because there are too many issues in this world. It's just to roll up your sleeves and take a whack at something, anything. You really do have everything you need to make the difference you want to see in the world. And I think Dan was the person who helped me see that. And now I've seen it everywhere. I would say, be bold. Don't be cynical. It's so boring. Cynical is just like the, the evil. <laughs> it's just in, you know, go for it and, um, and know that the sky's the limit. October 21st, we will be celebrating UN Day. UN Day is actually October 24th, but it's the middle of a week, and October 21st is a Sunday. It gives us a chance to really all come together, and we will give you information on that. We'll also be inviting the media and Ms. Beville to that also, and we will then announce formally to the media that this program is going on. On December 9th, we will celebrate uh, Human Rights Day in Westchester. And it's a, a day celebrated by the United Nations. And we will then have another opportunity to bring together all the youth who have decided to get involved in a kind of science fair experience where we'll look at works in progress. And so we'll see where people are at, what they're doing, what they're uh, challenges are, what opportunities there will be, and we'll encourage them, whether they're individuals or groups, to work with civil society, NGOs, nonprofits, so that they have some relationship in terms of their research. Saying that it will be in the spring of next year, one year from this time, where we will have the final projects. So we will give the school the opportunity of using the school year for the final project to come out at the end of the school year. Last month we had uh, our initial projects in April. And all those who are working with nonprofits will receive a donation for the nonprofit they've been working with. So all of our cha challenge champions will receive some support for the activities that they're promoting. I just think that it's really important that um, you stress um, why it is important for young people to learn about the uh, uh, Declaration of Human Rights and what difference it will make in the lives of young people to embrace human rights. So this is one very good reason to be doing this. We will enable young people to understand what human rights are and take an active position in supporting ideas that emanate from that, that speak to their heart. We all see what's happening in the news today, and it is depressing in many ways because people's human rights are being trampled upon almost regularly, and certainly not only in this country, but if you look at Russia, if you look at the Philippines, if you look at uh, Turkey, many other countries, China, throughout the world, human rights are not given to everyone. And if you look at the East and the West, or countries that have dictatorships and free democracies, there are parts of human rights within dictatorships, like the freedom for medical attention, which is different than here where we pay an arm and a leg for our medical attention and also for education which is often free in those countries. Maybe we all need to come together to understand what human rights are, what they should be and what they could be for all of us. But every student will gain immensely understanding of their place in the world and that they can affect positive change for the, the rest of the world as well as for their families and communities. So let's rock our world with this. Excellent.